Hello and welcome to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes Grand Arena Championships, Season 36, Week 3, Round 1. My name is Boma Fett. I am 4 and 2 on the season. I went 3 and 0 last week and that bumped me up into Kyber 2. I kind of live right on the edge between Kyber 3 and Kyber 2. Win a couple, move up. Lose a couple, move down. I've got kind of a strange matchup this round, so let's see who my opponent is. King Monoli. I have no idea if I'm saying that correctly. I apologize if I'm getting it wrong, but that's what I'm going with. King Monoli. Let's go to the Hotbot for a quick comparison. The Hotbot shows a ton of green on my side and almost no red on King Monoli's side. So let's zoom in and take a closer look. Now the GAC stats are interesting. First, they are quite a bit lower than mine, but based on the number of Zetas, this account is much younger than mine, so you would expect lower stats. However, the undersized are actually higher than mine, so King Mona Lee goes undersized a lot. The other thing is that their ratio of defense to offensive wins suggests that they lean much more heavily on offense. They are an offense-focused player and probably don't set the greatest defense. I have a very large advantage in overall GP, almost 8.2 million to 6.8 million, so nearly 1.4 million more. That's a huge advantage. And how is someone with only a 6.8 million GP hanging out in Kyber 2? That is something we're going to have to investigate. Now, despite the huge difference in overall GP, our top 80 GPs are actually not that far apart. Less than 100,000 difference in top 80 GP. So the part of the roster that actually gets used in GAC, I don't have a huge advantage there. I do have a very large advantage in number of Zetas. I mentioned this just a moment ago. I'm at 205, King Monoli is at 130. This suggests I've been playing the game probably at least two years longer, or at least this account is two years younger than mine because it's always difficult to tell whether this is someone's first account or if it's a second account or an alternate account. I have a slight speed advantage, gear 11 and above, and a little bit larger speed advantage in the top 80, and that is reflected here on the mod analysis where I have more mods with high speed secondaries. I also have 90 more six stop mods. Now the reason the gear 11 and above speed is much closer than the top 80 speed is that I have a lot more characters, gear 11 and gear 12, and so my mods are much more spread out in my gear 11 and above, which brings that average down compared to the top 80 where things are more focused. Now I do have more gear 13 characters as well, 95 to 84, and I even have a slight advantage in total relic levels, 459 to 430 though King Monolith does have more characters, Relic 6 and above. Now, one of the strategies that people with lower GP use in order to punch up and climb in GAC is Datacrons. King Monolith does not appear to be any more into Datacrons than I am. It's not that I ignore Datacrons, but I am not super into Datacrons where I've got 30 or 40 of them. In the Galactic Legends, we are actually even 3 to 3. It is very unusual for me to face someone who has the same number of GLs as me. I'm almost always facing four, five, six, or even seven GLs. According to GAC history, King Monolith saves all three Galactic Legends for offense. Remember, they are a very offense-focused player. And usually, I do the same thing because I am facing someone who has more Galactic Legends than I have. And so in order to clear their Galactic Legends that they put on defense, I need to save mine for offense. But in this case, knowing that my opponent does not put GLs on defense, I'm actually going to change that up this round and see if I can catch King Monoli off guard. In the key characters, King Monoli has not unlocked Ben Solo or Starkiller, but here's where we find the secret to King Monoli's success. They have both the Executor and the Profundity and they place both of them on defense. So that's how they win their matches. They save most of their best squads for offense so that they can full clear their opponent. 
They've gotten very good at the off-meta counters for the Executor and the Profundity so that they can clear their opponent's ships, and they place their Profundity and Executor both on defense, hoping that their opponent will not be able to clear both of them. Now, in order to counteract this, I have saved an extra fleet for offense that I normally put on defense, and my strategy is going to be to use my Executor to beat the Profundity, and then do an old-school two-shot against the Executor. This may or may not work, which is why I'm hoping that putting a couple of GLs on defense will be enough to stop King Monoli. In the other new characters, you'll notice that King Monoli has not unlocked a bunch of the marquee characters. Sorty, Bushleia, Sonastaros, Zori Bliss, not even unlocked. This is a strategy for optimizing your roster. You don't unlock characters until you're ready to start farming them. So King Monoli's roster is very compact, very top heavy, with nothing at the bottom. Lots of characters that have not been unlocked or are sitting at level one gear one. So after looking at this report, you would think I should dominate this matchup. But because of that Profundity strategy, putting both Profundity and Executor on defense, this is actually going to be very challenging for me. Can I clear both of those capital ships? Can I keep him from clearing my defense? So let's go to the game and take a look at the board. In the top zone, I have set Sith Triumvirate, Beskar Mando, Boba Fett, Phasma, and Dash Rendar. In the bottom zone, I've got Malgus with a revived Datacron, Jedi Master Luke under a Bastila lead, CLS, Qui-Gon, and Maul. And in the back zone, I've got Jedi Master Kenobi, I'm hoping that he uses his Galactic Legends in the front zone and he gets to this back zone and has nothing to beat Kenobi. Along with Kenobi, I've got Adrad, Newt, Finfin fin Poe, and Savage Malik. And I made a change in my fleet zone. Instead of the home one, I have the Negotiator on defense. I'm going to try and use the home one in a two-shot against his executor. I know there are people who say you can use your Tarkin fleet against Profundity. My Tarkin is gear 11, that fleet is undergeared. There are people who will say you can just use your finalizer against the executor. Well, I've never done that successfully. I tried a whole bunch of times in the fleet arena the other day and wasn't able to do it. So I'm going to go for the two-shot using home one against the executor. Let's check out King Monoli's defense. In the top zone, we have gear 11 Geonosians, and there's no spy in this squad. Adrad, Karth, Dooku, and Rolo. In the bottom zone, he has set Mothma, Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn, General Grievous, and Darth Malgus. Now the one squad I was expecting here that I don't see is Darth Revan. That could be hiding in the back, or he might have saved it for offense. So I'm going to start here in the bottom zone against Malgus, and I'm going to take my SLKR here. Now this could be a little bit of a risk if he put one of his Galactic Legends in the back zone, but I would be very shocked if he did. I'm saving Kylo for a solo against Karth, Kylo Ren Unmasked, and First Order Executioner I plan to use against Night Sisters, which is one of the squads I'm expecting in the back zone. We'll start off with a poke. We'll swap this back to Kylo, and I'm going to poke there. We'll call the mass assist. 
and let's swipe. I think my Stormtrooper storm is probably not long for this world. We'll poke again. Good counter-attacking. Let's do this. We'll swipe. And let's go ahead and call the assist here. We didn't kill the Marauder. That was surprising. Okay, I'm going to pop my ultimate. We'll do some poking and some swiping and some swiping and some poking. He had to do that and take a banner away from Hux. Jerk. Oh, you know what? That was a mistake. I should have killed him on Kylo's turn instead of on Hux's turn. Because then he wouldn't have been able to come back. That's okay. I should still be able to take him out. Hopefully he doesn't take out Hux, though. Okay, only a 61. Not great. Against Mothma, we're going to go with Aiden. We'll go straight after Kyle Katarn. He's low level. See if we can terminate him. Beautiful. She just tried to bring him back, and of course she can't. And we're going to go back and forth with Biggs. Every time we attack him, he gets a bonus turn. We counterattack him, he gets another bonus turn. Back and forth and back and forth. Let's see if we can stun him. No stun. Increases cooldowns. Aiden finally getting a turn. And Death Trooper. All right. Oh, we had the daze on him momentarily. And Mothma cleansed it. Okay, see if we can stun him this time. No, he's dodging it. Did he have foresight? I didn't even look. Okay, let's try and terminate him. He dodged that! Wow. What is Biggs' dodge? What is his dodge percent? Dodge that. 57. Against Qui-Gon. He has got a fast Qui-Gon and a fast Anakin. But I believe my Jedi Revan should be faster. Okay, so swap this to Yoda. Get rid of that foresight and do an AoE. And 
And let's see. I'm just going to basic. Okay, perfect. We'll get rid of him. Big hit. No big hit. Call the assist. Uh, let's go ahead and steal those buffs and spread them. Goodbye, Anakin. I kind of wish they had popped the savior on Revan. Unfortunately, they did not. So, 54. Against Maul, I am really, really tempted to try a Nest solo or Kira and Nest. I've got one of my viewers who's been telling me that I should be using Kira Nest against Maul in 3v3, but I can use Nest for a solo against the Rolo squad in the Northern Zone, and I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. Although, to be honest, I have had that fail before too. Skywalker 5s and Rex here. Form up, call Skywalker for the assist, and go ahead and do this. Goodbye, Karth. He's going to make Skywalker kneel down here. One more turn to the Rexecute. Goodbye, Bo. Goodbye, Maul. 54. Against Grievous, do I go with a Wampa solo here or do I save Wampa for the back zone? I am expecting Aiden in the back. My other option is to use Padme here. I go Padme with Snips and Mace. Throw a garbage Datacron on there. Okay, we'll go Protection up. Big hit. Going to hit the shatter point here. Kick to the face. Ooh, big hit there on Padme. Not liking that. Hit the shatter point here. Got Shatterpoint on Grievous. Protection up. Another Shatterpoint on Grievous. Ooh, Mace is hurting. And... Grievous is about to get another turn, which means Mace may die here. Yep. Fifty-three. In the back. We've got Darth Revan, Night Sisters, Aiden, Lando, and Tarkin. So that's the Darth Revan I was expecting up front. He's here in the back. 
I'm going to go ahead and go here with Star Killer. Do this first. We'll throw that at him. All of that was out, was done without me ever taking a turn. Okay, let's get rid of him. Goodbye. We'll go over here. Fifty-three. I have not been efficient so far. Against Iden, we'll go with Wampa. Fifty-nine against the Night Sisters. Kylo Ren unmasked. First Order Executioner and Watt Tambor. We put the tank tech on Kylo, put the weapons tech on Fox. Goodbye, Mother Talzin. Uh, we're going to swing and miss here. We'll stun her. this and 57 I'm going to come back for these two against Karth I'm going to do a Kylo solo We'll do this. We'll just keep doing this for a while. Okay, we'll take a big hit. We'll get Zalbar down. Oh, he dodged. I think I had blind. I'll go ahead and do this. And take out mission. Now we'll do this a couple of times, get back our health and protection. 
Against Adrad, I am going to take my Bounty Hunters. I think Adrad might be faster than me. Yep. Okay, we'll Roar. We'll Mass Assist. Uh, we're on Cassian now, Mass Assist. We're at 60%, 70%. Ooh. Uh, let's heal up. Back over on Jin. We've got Contract. We'll go ahead and Roar. We'll heal. him out. Oh, big hit from Cassie in there. Roar again. Let's disintegrate him. And it looks like I'm all healed up, so let's just go ahead and call the assist. She's unstunnable. Well, she dodged anyhow. There we go. 57. Against Rolo, I'm going to take Nest. I am surprised that they got days on my nest. My nest has really high tenacity. And there's a, an ability block. I guess I probably should have checked potency before doing this. There's buff immunity and ability block. Wow. They are landing all kinds of debuffs. By Captain Han. By Rolo. Now this is where it can go wrong against Leia. If she gets the right combination of attacks. But she did not. 58. Against the Geos, I'm going to take Darth Vader. Merciless. Force Crush. Oh, wow, we didn't get any debuffs there on Poggle. We'll throw this at the Alpha. We'll hit the Soldier. We'll hit Poggle. 59. Against Count Dooku. I'm going to take Jedi Luke with Hermit Yoda and Old Ben. We're going to get rid of Droidica first, I think. Let's stun them. Let's wave. There we go. Big hit on Dooku.
the Baiduku. Goodbye, Sunfat, 57. Executor and Profundity, as expected. Against Lando. We'll take just Han and Chewie. I don't think we even need a leadership. Seven. And against Tarkin. Let's go with our own Imperial Troopers. We'll put this on the Dark Trooper. I wonder if I should just go after Tarkin or Krennic or the TIE Pilot. I honestly don't know. Okay, that worked. Goodbye Tarkin. And now just Krennic. Fifty-seven. Sixteen thirty two heading to the fleets. This is for all the marbles. Against the profundity, I'm taking the executor. This is all about the opening barrage. If Razor Crest survives, I win. Okay, we heal. Now, we put the mark on the Falcon. Call the assist. And bye bye, Falcon. We can ignore the Y Wing's taunt. Uh, except the Executor can't. My characters can, but the capital ship can't. Let's go here. And mass assist on the Y wing. Here comes the ghost. Yep. My Y Wing. I'm going hard after IG 2000. That's okay. This should do it. 74. Now against the Executor. I'm going to two-shot this, so we're going to go with Mace. And I'm going to give Mace three good ships. Ships that should survive long enough to exhaust their special abilities. Oh, I got to go first. Not expecting that. 
All right. There's the AOE. There's an AOE there. Okay. I need him to get out his, there we go, breach. Now I'm just going to let it time out. All right, so this is how I used to take out the executor a long, long time ago, and it wasn't the most reliable, which is why I now save my executor for offense. So this could go bad. Okay, I'm going to go after the Xanadu. No wiggle. There we go, Xanadu's down. Um, looks like Houndstooth is going to go next, so I am not going to do the Shield Disruptor. We'll just swing and miss here. Uh, let's go ahead and go... Yeah, let's go AoE. Okay, we can AOE here. We'll bring in the Phantom. Do that. And let's see. Now well, it looks like they're going to go next again. Got to save the shield disruptor for a point where, uh, oh, well, now it's pointless. I was going to say you have to sh save the shield disruptor for a point where they are not going to go next so that you actually have an opportunity to take advantage of the shield disruptor. Okay, let's go after IG. We're going to bring in... Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Cassian. Let's see if we can burn down this guy. Almost. There we go. Nicely done. Okay. The issue is going to be getting through the houndstooth. Do I want to heal? Let's heal. We'll save the AoE until we've got our fifth ship on the field. Wiggle. Uh, we'll go ahead and AoE. Oh, they got their contract. That's not good. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in... Do I bring in the ghost or do I bring in Wedge? I'm going to bring in the ghost. Might have been smarter to bring in Wedge, to be honest. Um... Come on, I need some assists. There we go. More assists, please. Alright, there's my ult. That'll help, I think. I hope. Man, I wish I had that shield disruptor. Got him. All right. Not pretty, but it worked. 41.
and malevolence against the finalizer. Oh, that went on the hyena. Don't like that. Okay, we'll put buzz droids on their echelon. Get some assists here. Nice. Let's get some assists here. Oh, a dodge. We'll bring out the spy. Huh, goodbye, Kylo. Buzz droids did their thing. That's that. 72. All right, so the planned two shot worked. I actually could have put an even heavier defense down. There were a lot of squads I didn't use, but I'm pretty happy with a 2040, given that I had to two shot one of the fleets. So I need him to fail at least once probably need him to fail twice because I wasn't as efficient as I'd like to be, although I was able to make up a few banners by doing some solos. So we will come back tomorrow and see what King Monoli does against my defense. All right, so there's the win against King Monoli. Let's see how it happened. As you can see, he only cleared one zone. So he stormed through that front zone. He got to the back and he found Jedi Master Kenobi waiting for him. He attempted two battles against Jedi Master Kenobi and lost both. But he didn't give up immediately. He went to the front zone, and he tried a battle against the Sith Triumvirate. He was able to defeat Sion, but unable to defeat either Treya or Nihilus, and at that point he knew the match was over and he stopped. So the trap worked, but even if it hadn't, he lost that battle to the Sith Triumvirate, and that may have been enough that I could have won. It pays to scout your opponent, to know their tendencies, and to exploit those. Obviously, this was a mismatch in my favor, except for the profundity. And you all know that fleets have long been a way for people with smaller rosters to beat people with larger rosters. So I'm very happy that my defensive strategy worked. So next season, I should have my own profundity that should make these kind of matches much easier. But it's also good to know that I do have other options. So I'd like to thank King Monoli for the match. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.